Today, we are taking your health back with me, Wendy Lowe. We are coming to you from our studios of Think Tech Hawaii in downtown Honolulu and my home office in Makiki. I would like to introduce a fine young veteran who inspires so many to lead a healthier and more active lifestyle. It's my honor to introduce Mr. Ben Wilkinson from Bodies by Ben, LLC. Ben, thank you so much for being here. Aloha and welcome. Aloha, Wendy, and thanks for having me. Yes. So, you know, Ben, I just recently met you, and there, there's so much that intrigues me. So we're going to talk about it throughout this, this story time. But please share with us a little bit about your health journey and how it all began. Um, in 2000, we'd say 2007, um, I was overseas and um, working out in the gym, just training. And someone asked me, have I ever competed before? And I said, no. And I really didn't know anything about the competition um, circuit or anything like that. So a coach that approached me, gave me some information. I got a trainer and I started training for my first show. Um, it was through the organization of Competitive Bodybuilder, which is a um, drug-free organization. So they polygraph and they blood test you and all those good things. And from then on, I was hooked. Uh -huh. Wow, that's all it took? That's all uh -huh. it took. That's all it took. And and I didn't even know that they had taken this picture. Um, this picture was published in the um, Physique magazine that particular quarter. And it was my first show. I was a novice. It was my debut. And uh, my coach was like, hey, look, look on page, blah, blah, blah. And so seeing myself in the magazine, I was like, okay, I definitely got to do this again. This is awesome. <laughs> Of course, look at you. I mean, that's pretty um, humbling and natural that it all transpired. And right. look at what became of it, a whole new direction for you and a whole new chapter for you to carry out to get others who didn't think about that as a, 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 a you know, a play or an option. But now look at you and you're there to help and inspire so many. So I see in the next slide, you are here with a friend and you're proudly displaying a caregiver shirt. Please share with us what this is all about. So, so this picture was taken. Um, that's that's my friend and best man at my wedding. Um, yesterday was actually my wedding anniversary, but Ooh, that's uh, my best friend Nate. He's um, here on the island, um, and we're displaying a caregiver shirt. One because Nate's a caregiver for his mother, who suffers uh, uh, from dementia, and the caregiver shirt was a, a initiative started by a good friend, actress um, Brandy Evan. And she's been a caregiver for our mom, you know, for many, many years. And we wanted to show her support and also um, show that we take care of those that take care of others. Wow. And, you know, we have to take that very seriously. Being a caregiver mm -hmm. is a full-time job. Exactly. And, you know, when your friends say, hey, you know, Ben, I can't join you tonight. Um, can't join you and your wife. I have to stay home and take care of my mom. You want to encourage and inspire them as much as you can because they want to go out with you and your wife, but they're going to stay home and do the honor of taking care of a parent or a loved one. And it's sometimes very difficult and it gets very difficult. So we continue to inspire them and having that T-shirt honoring them. That's a whole, you know, that's a great lift up. So I'm glad you all have that. So yeah. Ben, I, I know that many folks come to you to start to take their health back. How did you get started training other men, women? Um, for me, it, it started in college, um, 18 years old um, at Howard University. Um, I actually started training um, gymnasts and um, collegiate cheerleaders. And um, one of my mentors and coaches um, to this day was like, hey, you should really um, consider getting certified and just, you know, it was a good part-time job. And for me, it gave me free membership to the gym. So I could get into the gym anytime I wanted to because I was one of the trainers. But uh, once I once I became um, became a certified trainer, I really loved the lifestyle. I loved the uh, information that I could share. And my particular love language is service. So I enjoy helping others. Like when someone come in and they say, hey, I wanna get ready for a wedding or I wanna get ready for a show or lose 20 to 50 pounds. I'm like, okay, great, let's do this. So um, I tend to be more excited than most of my clients when they first come in. And when I tell them it's really easy, it's almost like, I know I, sounds like, I sound like a salesman, 
at that at that particular time. But when they go through the process of actually seeing what can what they can achieve if they just stay consistent and stick to the program and trust the process, that aha moment and seeing seeing that light bulb go off is is really rewarding. Wow. I, you know, I hate to use the word, it becomes an addiction, but you know, it's something that you just crave and want because you're making them feel good. And then as they feel good, they look great. And so that's why I say it's an addiction because we all want that. You know, we all crave to feel, but we always love the benefit of looking good. And so you have that in the palms of your hand to help them. They wanted to just lose a few pounds but you get them so excited about losing those pounds and they look great and they accomplished their goals. And wow, it's a winning team. Huh, Ben? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's a, it's a very rewarding um, career choice. Wow. So I know transformation is definitely a result that you are trying to reach. Please share with us about a little bit about someone's journey. They come in, they want to lose some weight or they want to get ready for a competition. What, what does that entail? Um, my particular style is meeting the person where they are, trying not to do too much too fast or, or being too aggressive or ambitious, because if you overload a client with too many tasks, do this, do that, eat this, don't eat that, um, it's kind of discouraging. So I always start with changing one variable at a time. And that could be try to cut your sugar try to get up earlier, try to walk your block, try to add more steps to your routine. And as they master that one variable, I add other variables. So it's a step-by-step -step process. And before you know it, uh, they've, it's a lifestyle change. Wow. So, you know, someone walks into your gym and just comes to you because they know that they want to get good results. And it takes a certain commitment. You know, you can tell them what you're going to tell them, but what is expected after you give them the coach, you know, the talk, what is expected of them from you to achieve their goal? So I am, I am um, really candid about my expectations and always tell them, you know, hey, you're paying for a service. So you can get the most out of me if you follow the guidance. You don't want to pay for the guidance and then go against and, and be non-compliant. And some people are, and that's just one of the things. And, you know, you fall off the wagon, you get back on, you fall down, you get back up. That's the process. So it takes a lot of patience the first 90 days of a, of a new um, client trying to, because you're changing habits and you're changing lifestyle habits, which is very hard. So after about a month of consistency, most of the clients are locked in and they're eager to do more and that's when you know you got them right that you're going to see pure success because they're on that journey now they feel it it's a it's an ebb and flow so it's never linear i mean you'll get six great weeks and then you'll have the big breakdown <laughs> and i'm always prepared for the big breakdown right <laughs> you have the big breakdown and then at that point you either decide you're going to push through that breakdown or you quit and you give up and you start again. But it is a cyclic um, because you're dealing with emotions. I mean, food, uh, restrictions, uh, exercise, it's not something naturally that that uh, person wants to do. And so you'll have the you'll have a great you have your peaks and valleys, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, that's why I think I never got started because I'm a peak and valley. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> and the weakness towards food and, and all of that. And then just the, you know, the craziness of a schedule, uh, of a lifestyle schedule that keeps us on the go and to make that commitment. Um, so I guess, too, you know, once you get that personality and you guys click and the trust that he or she has to have in you, to guide them along that journey. I think that helps a lot too, knowing that you're gonna be there and still love them, even if they have those valley moments. <laughs> exactly, and, right. and like you said, you hit on a key point, trust. And normally, you know, someone walks into the gym, you're just another coach or trainer. They've probably talked to five or six different other coaches and trainers. So to them, they're being pit, you're selling them something. And what I, what I encourage, new clients to do is talk to as many coaches and trainers, you know, before you decide 
who you're going to work with because it is a commitment of trust. I'm going to trust that you're going to do what I asked you to do, and you're going to trust me to come up with the right program for you to, to reach your goals. And once you have that trust, they actually, and they start to see their body changing, then it's almost cruise control, you know? So, uh, so again, you know, a lot of this is mental, right? It's mental, mind over matter, you know, trusting and doing what you're there told and, and then both ways for you. So I know a lot of this, like life, it's a lot of a mind thing. We can focus on the positive outcome, trust the guy to get me there, it'll work. It's a winning combination. Correct. So I know your mantra is get up, get out, and get moving. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Well, the first step, getting up, whether that's getting up off the couch or, you, you know, something happened in life, you, you lost a loved one or you went through a traumatic experience, divorce, whatever, um, you're knocked down um, metaphorically. Get up. Get up and commit to changing your current trajectory. Um, getting out is that second step. Okay, now that I'm up, what am I going to do? Um, join your local gym. Go talk to a trainer. Um, pick up a book. Start learning about exercise science, what it is. Um, get out and start talking to nutritionists. Get out and go get a physical. Find out your numbers. Know your numbers. Know if your cholesterol is high. Um, know what your blood count is. All these things we take for granted. Um, know if you're um, at risk for stroke or have a family history of hypertension or blood pressure. That's that getting out. And then get moving. Get moving is just executing. Um, don't fall into analysis paralysis, reading all the books and following all the TikToks and things you see on YouTube and Instagram. Go out and fail forward. You know, go out and try something and say, okay, I don't like spin class. I tried it. It's not for me. Uh, I tried Zumba. Not for me. Definitely don't like CrossFit. But I do like hiking or I do like hot yoga. Find something you like. And that's that moving part. And then try to be consistent. Um, find an accountability partner. Um, share it on Facebook or on social media or with your friends or bring someone to class with you. Yeah. So. That's always, we always need a buddy. Accountability buddy is the best because if I don't want to go, you're going to make me go. And if when you don't want to go, I'm going to make you go because you made me go the last time. Exactly. So it, you, we, all, we all need a buddy. You know, and also you had another great point is Go out and get some tests done, medical tests, see where you're at. So you know your baseline. How much harder do you need to work? Be aware of where you're at with your body. It's so critical. So and that's the hard part because a lot of people, they don't want to know where they're at medically. And so if we can encourage them to go and get their, you know, their heart rates, their A1Cs, their blood and a sugar Correct. tested, all of those things are so key. And then you're, when they report to you, they share those numbers with you. And your goal is to not just make them look good, but to feel good internally. Exactly. So how important is a healthy nutritional change in your, your, in your regime with it? You know, nutrition is, you know, one of the pillars of great health. Yes. You can, you can't, we always crack a joke and we always say you can't outwork a bad diet. So what you put in, garbage in, garbage out. Um, and one of the things, you know, a lot of people think, oh, if I'm to be healthy, you know, I lose all the taste and flavorings in my food. And that's, you know, so not true right now with all the modern advances in food science. And um, there are nutritional, um, I would say, um, things that we could do to curve a lot of our cravings. It's just you have to want to find that particular mitigation. So nutrition is the is the foundation of, you know, what you put in is going to manifest outwards. So if you're eating junk, you're going to look like junk food. You know, if you're eating processed food, you're going to it's going to show in your exactly. skin and in your muscles. Yeah, exactly. You are what you eat. You are, are you are what you eat. That's yeah. And, you know, people say, oh, but it's too expensive to eat healthy. I'm like, then you're not doing it right. Because I've been eating very healthy uh, for the last 20 years and it it saves me a lot of money. And it so does. That's the attractive part for me is that it does save me a lot of money and makes my body feel good. And so I wouldn't know, I want that combination of saving money, feeling good, and going to somebody like you to help me and guide me to maintain that. 
you know. And then the, the other cost that most do not calculate is long term long term health problems. Bingo. So when Bingo. you start when you start, you know, looking at the cost of insulin if you're a diabetic or looking at the cost of health care and things like that, it gets very expensive quick. Very expensive. Yes. And so, you know, like I always say that there's a dollar burger or you can eat a two dollar apple. They're gonna pick the dollar burger because it's cheaper, but in the long run, that apple would have saved your life. Right. You know, so but they don't see it that way. They just live for today. So our goal with this show and with what you're doing, Ben, is to educate people, let them know that it's not that difficult and it's it's affordable to maintain good health, right? Especially in the long run. So I know women also come to you for guidance. Do you have a lot of women in your practice? Actually, I have more um, female clients than uh, male clients. And it's a, it's it's normally that way because, you know, we tend to think we know more about fitness. And so why do I need to hire a trainer? Now, I do have male clients, but I, um, um, my female clients, they come through the door and they have goals and they know exactly what they want to do <laughs> and they know exactly how they want to get there and their biggest you know um hurdle is scheduling and time right that's their biggest you know that's the biggest wall is they're they're never not motivated mm -hmm. they're always motivated but their schedules and their time you know we have right. mothers we have newlyweds we have uh, working professionals and so the schedule conflict is normally what they have to learn to manage Right. I can see that'd be very tough. That's really tough, that one. But once they get committed, they're going to make it happen. So, and I know that you have some flexibility in your schedule to work around and schedule them when you have your pukas in your schedule. So, exactly. But I got to ask you a question. So do you work the women as hard as you would work the men? If, if their goals are the same, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, a workout is a workout is a workout. Um, <laughs> I don't play favorite. So we're all we're all pushing to get results, and I push my clients um, to their limit. Not necessarily to um, um, I don't have like cookie cutter programs where everyone's doing the same thing. But if I know if I know a client has more in them, then I'm going to get it out of them. Very good. That's yeah. good. That's the instinct that you have, right? That's the way right. so good. Yeah, you can you can feel them and understand them and work with them to their level. That's important and not your level. So that's very important. So I know it's all about balance in one's life. Mm -hmm. So what does Ben do besides encourage so many to take their health back? What else do you do besides this, Ben? Oh, man, it's it's more of a question. What don't I do? <laughs> um, I'm active in the community with um, farming, um, beekeeping. Yes. Um, I have a good circle of friends here. Um, I got into beekeeping. Um, through a program from the University of Michigan, um, actually um, Michigan State University. Um, and um, they have a program called Heroes to Hide where veterans can sign up and go through an eight to 12 week course and become a master beekeeper. So prior to me joining that course and signing up, I um, met a friend here in Wamanalo and he became my sensei and showed, he, you know, he. Uh, he would allow me to come out and get into the hives and coach me. And, you know, we'd go to the state fair and extract honey and do different demonstrations and, um, you know, coach me on how to actually make the hives by hand. And wow. so once I finished the master beekeeping course, I actually could apply a lot of the things I learned in the classroom to what I was doing in Juan Manalo. And it's just something that I love and enjoy now and just really helped like with the whole farming side of thing. So fishing, farming, fitness, and family, all those wow. things. Yeah. All the Fs, huh? all the Fs. All the Fs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the uh, Fs, the good all ones. good. Yeah, the good, the good ones. ones. And you know, so that's what really intrigued me because I knew that you were a coach, a trainer. And when you told me that you had knowledge about bees, I'm like, wait a minute. So the vision for me was this big muscle man with this little tiny bee. <laughs> right, you know, right. That. So, and I know that that's how you um, handle your clients, you know, as gentle as, as and ginger as handling those bees, but then knowing what the bees are capable of, you have to keep them in line as well. So it applies to what you do in your spare time as, as well as your professional, 
but share with us a little bit about how you became a master beekeeper. It, it took um, years. Um, you know, the certification is probably the easiest part because it's, it's books, it's answering questions. But actually getting into the hives and being able to open up a hive and look at that hive and say, okay, this hive is weak or this hive has a strong queen or this hive has no queen and it's getting ready to swarm. Those are all the nuanced things that master beekeepers know just by looking at a hive and can keep that hive from swarming and losing bees and can keep the um, bees, the colony from collapsing. And I was lucky enough to have a fourth generation um, beekeeper that used all traditional methods. You know, we don't use any chemicals on the bees and we let the bees do what bees do. And his, his queens are ranked um, second in the world for resistance to the varroa mite. And they're right there in Wamanalo. And so under his guidance, I became, I gradually became a master beekeeper after being stung, you know, <laughs> a lot. And, you know, you have to learn, <laughs> you have to learn patience and just learn that, you know, when I first started, I was very anxious and dealing with the bees. And what, what it helped me to learn is, is patience, really, and just slowing down. And when you slow down, it's almost like the bees aren't there. They could care less what you're doing, you know. So it's, it, it's easier to answer a bunch of questions on a test than it is to actually get into the hive and do the <laughs> beekeeping. Wow. So what I'm hearing you say is that the bees, they can feel their senses are so, um, so strong, astute that they can feel your anxiousness. Uh, and then that's how, that's why they become anxious and they do things that they shouldn't be doing. Right, it's, a, it's, a, it's definitely an energy exchange. Um, our job as master beekeepers is to manage that hive so that that hive thrives. Um, bees can sense when danger is, you know, coming to their hive and, you know, they have bees that, and that's their whole job is to protect the hive. And you'll get, um, those um, protection bees, you'll they'll actually hit your veil to kind of let you know to back up. Wow. Right. That is intense. You know, we could do a whole talk on just the bees. We and can. We, we And we will because uh, bees are so valuable to all of us and people have no understanding of how valuable these bees are and what dire straits these bees have been in unless we have great um, master beekeepers, you know, um, to to regulate and to enhance the population of bees is so critical. And um, I would really like to have a, a panel of you bee keepers on to talk about and to share with others that we need to really take care of the bees. We'll have to invite you out to the bee farm. And uh, we will come, we will come because I want to and I, I want to understand more. I was given a short um, teaching, uh, <laughs> tutorial um, a few weeks ago and when I met you I thought wow I'm going to learn more about the bees and so yes we will come out and we will do a show when we're out there in your at your at your property so awesome. yeah I know that you you know I know you love outdoors I know f words the fishing word <laughs> so being physical is a very important as well as having fun with your right. buddies as you fish so what else do you do tell me about some fishing stories so actually, prior to um, coming to Hawaii in 2013, I couldn't cast a, a, a rod and reel from the shore. <laughs> I knew nothing about fishing. And so um, my, my good friends, uh, Nate Hasugawa, Ashley Laylee, um, Shannon Harris, that's all of us in the picture. We caught our first marlin wow. on, uh, on Sandy. Both Ashley and Nate had um, fishing yachts. And so they were like, we're gonna take you fishing. And when they said, take me fishing, you know, I'm thinking like, okay, I've never been deep sea fishing. How hard could it be? Oh my, <laughs> it was like, grab that line, pull this over here, run this all over. You know, and it was, it was a lot when I first went out. And you know, we have um, six lines out and it went from learning how to put the lines out to, you know, knowing what to do when they yell fish on. I think by the end of the first season, I was driving the boat and wow. I started working on, um, they were like, you might as well start working on your captain's license. We got two boats. So those guys really set 
took me in and just like showed me like you know everything about the ocean here and i mean it's one of those things that i just enjoy like i used to always love getting a text saying hey we're pulling out you know be at the boat at four o'clock in the morning we're going over to koalina so um we would deep sea fish as much as we could as our schedules allowed prior to COVID. Wow. So, you know, again, that's a good uh, analogy. You know, you not knowing and being afraid, but says, heck, how hard could this be? Just like weightlifting, bodybuilding, how hard right. could this all be? And you dove in and you say, holy smoke, what do, what do, what do, what do, what <laughs> And so that's what you're doing to your clients is you're yelling out calls for them to do this, right. do that. So now you are a little more sympathetic, but then you understand that the harder you do it, the harder you thrive, the more you drive, the more productive you become. So these the analogies that, you know, you've been faced with helps you in your practice and what you're doing on a day to day basis. So good. That's why your friends invited you to go fishing, not because they wanted you to learn how to fish. They wanted you to see what you put your clients through and the right. result. The result. Right. Yes. So. You know, um, you have such wonderful advice always, Ben. So as we wrap it up, uh, could you share a few final words for our audience? I just, you know, I want the audience to take away that, you know, looking at fitness on Instagram and TikTok, you know, it, it could look, it could be pretty daunting, but don't be intimidated to walk into a gym and talk to a professional. Um, there are plenty of great trainers here on this island. Um, this island is a very healthy and um, fitness first um, location. But ask the question, walk in there, look for information and listen to the coaches. And there are you know, hundreds of trainers and coaches here willing to help with, with nutrition, with programming, or with just motivation. And it costs you nothing to go in and ask the question, free consultation. So um, look at it as an investment in yourself. Don't look at it as an expense. Um, this is a long-term investment. Your health is truly your wealth. Um, and at 48 years old, uh, I've been in this industry for, you know, I started coaching in college at 18. And it's something that I love. And it's something that I, I look forward to each morning I get up. I'm excited to go in and 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 meet whoever's going to walk through that door. So don't be afraid to walk into a gym. I know it looks a little, you know, intimidating. Just go in there, ask the question, get some information, and then act on it. Wow. So what you're saying is, it's you're never too old to get started, right? No, not at all. Just make the decision and let's do it, right? That's it. Get up, get out, and get moving. Simple. Yeah. Great advice. So. Right now, our show has come to a close for, for this moment, Ben. Mahalo to you um, for Bodies by Ben LLC. And again, a big mahalo for serving our great country. And we just love you and just mahalo for serving. I'm Wendy Lowe, and we'll be back in two weeks with another edition of Taking Your Health Back. Aloha, everyone. Thank you so much for watching ThinkTech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.